uh, real briefly, because of the coronavirus, the place I normally shoot these videos has been closed down until further notice. I do have six or seven videos remaining in the archive that I can publish, which should take me through over two weeks worth of videos. If they don't open before that, I'm going to run out of videos in my archive unless I go to another location and videotape or unless I do off table videos and blog type videos which is a consideration that you know I might just do that but what I'm saying here is there could be a disruption in the production of these videos um, if there is it's because you know there's there's no place to record new videos um, but I do have an emergency fund of archived videos in my folder here so I don't think it'll be a problem unless this goes on and on and on for a long time. Uh, we'll see what happens. It's the best I can do right now. In a whole lot of ways, pool reflects life itself. Have you ever met someone or known someone who just is not a good problem solver and just kind of escapes and avoids all problems until their problems completely pile up and then before you know it they're devastated and overwhelmed with problems and they're having a nervous breakdown and they don't know what to do and it all tracks back to people just not tackling their problems not everybody is a good problem solver and not everybody is emotionally or mentally equipped to solve their problems so you see this in pool itself, and this is the subject, not, not the whole psychology and all the mental stuff involved, but um, you see people just not dealing with or just refusing to deal with their problems until it's just it's too late and there's nothing they can do except make more mistakes because they avoided the problem to begin with. So, uh, that's what we're going to take a look at. Let's get on down the road. The more experience you are with playing pool, um, the more apt you are to solve problems, or to, to see problems, right off the break. Um, so, when your brain is automatically trained to see patterns, it's also automatically trained to eliminate certain shots and patterns because this is a problem and that is a problem and this is a problem. So their brain's working in lightning speed to figure out ways to either solve these problems or just find ways around and eliminate the problem itself. So, from the 1 to the 2, you should automatically see there's a problem. And from the 2 to the 3, there's other uh, obvious problems. And from the 3 to the 4, there's another obvious problem. Once you get past that 3 ball and get shape on the 4 ball, the problems automatically seem to be non-existent. The 4 to the 5 is easy, the 5 to the 6 is easy, no problem. The 6 to the 7 shouldn't be a problem. The 7 to the 8 isn't a problem, and the 8 to the 9 is not a problem. This is, of course, unless you develop your own problems throughout the rack. So before shooting this one ball, we have to figure out a way to solve this first problem. And from the two to the three, the same thing's going to come up. You have a problem. And from the three to the four, you have another problem. So before you go about tackling this rack, you should be figuring out how to solve those problems. And what so many players do is they're like, well, I'll just deal with it when I get there. Um... It, that you're never going to be a great pool player until you get it through your head that you cannot afford to do that. So let's take a look at the one to the two and determine what's what's a problem with that. It doesn't look like much of a problem. So why is it a problem? The answer to that question comes down to 
what pattern you're seeing on the first four balls, one, two, three, and four, where do you want to shoot this three ball? And determining where you want to shoot that three ball to get back on the four, that determines how you're going to play this one to the two. If you just kind of stun this back over to get the right shape on the two ball to draw straight back out across the center of the table to shoot this three ball in that bottom right hand corner. So the problem with doing it is when you stun this back or draw this back, that five ball is as you're, you're liable to go a little bit too long trying to get perfect on the two and now you're going to be snookered on the five. So the whole problem with the one to the two is that five ball is a glaring beach ball that can totally stop you in the tracks and have you losing this game. And you're about to see how all of it is interconnected. In, in a normal case, I would shoot this two ball in the side while going two rounds back up on the three ball. Um, and at, at first glance, well, that solves the problem. We can just shoot a stop shot on this one and have perfect shape on the two to go two rounds back up on the three. Um, the problem at that point, if you decide to use that pattern, is now the five balls still in the game. If, if you come up too short or too long on that two ball, and the four ball is in the game if you come up way short on that two ball, and the seven ball is also in the game. The cue ball can wind up hitting any one of those three balls if you try to go two rails back up out on the three. Now, if you get straight in on the three, where do you intend to be on this four ball to continue this rack? And now that seven ball is a glaring beach ball getting in the game. If you just shoot a stop shot on this three, you might have room in there uh, to make this four ball without a problem and just shoot a long shot on the four and easily get on the five. Are you with me? But this, it, in most cases, you're going to have an angle on the three, and that's going to make it complicated to get back on this four ball. If that seven ball wasn't where it is, the three to the four would be simple. But the seven ball is right there, and it's a problem. So no matter what pattern you choose to run those first four balls, you, you have problems you're going to have to figure out how to deal with. I don't know if everybody understood that, so let's take a look at the most common pattern on the first ball, the two ball, the three, and the four. The first thing you should note is this one ball is close to straight in, but it's not exactly straight in. Um, there's a tiny, tiny little bit of a right hand cut here if I'm shooting it down there in the bottom left hand corner, which I am. So if you draw this back, it's going to go on that angle right there. The second thing you should know is, is that two ball is not exactly sitting right in front of the side pocket. It's, it's a little bit up table, so we're going to have to draw this cue ball back and you can see the line on the two. So if we need, if we want to draw this over to the right hand side of the table, and I'm referring to the two ball, if we, if we draw it over for a straight across the line for a shot on that three ball, we're we're going to need to be down a little bit below that blue line. And now look how close you are. To, to that five ball if you do that you have like almost no margin of error if you if you choose that route so that five ball is a glaring problem if you decide to go with this what if we just stay up high on a two ball and we'll just put right hand English on this one ball and just kind of try to stop it as good as we can it might roll to the left just a hair um, but it should still be okay because we'll have a good angle on the two ball to go two rails back out on the other side of the table for a good shot on the three. Let's take a look at that.
Here's where we get on the two, and from that shot, we're on two rails back out on the three. The problem with this is, look how close you're coming to that four ball. The only way to steer around the five ball from that angle is to come close to the four ball. And no matter how you decide to get on that three ball, you're still going to have yet another problem of avoiding that seven ball and getting position on that four ball to go between that five and the seven. And that's if you can manage to avoid that eight ball too. Which way would you do it? That's what you need to determine before you get down on the table. All those problems have to be figured out. You need to come up with a plan uh, to execute this run out not just wait until problems come up. All right, sorry about that uh, long lecture. Let's get on down to it and quit yakking about it. I'm going with the first plan. I'm just going to draw back a little bit on this one, and I'm going to come very close to getting hooks behind that five ball, but I'm going to do my best, and I'm going to be very careful not to let that happen. That, that was really, really close, but you know, now we're going to get through the three. Um, but where exactly are we going to get on the three, and are we going to be able to get in that doorway between the five and the seven? If we can, we should be home free, but that's if we don't create our own problems in the process of running this rack. And you'll see me here walking around the table a little bit looking for the line on the four ball to get to the five and that'll tell me where I need to be on the three. And this will tell me how I need to shoot this two ball. And this is why you have to think four balls ahead. Three balls is simply not enough and it will get you in trouble. And you can see there with all the effort I, I took to try to get the right angle on the two to just go straight across the table on the three. Um, I was still too straight in and I had to draw it straight back diagonally toward me. And I went a little bit too long, and now I have a little bit of an angle on the three ball. Um, and a lot of guys miss this shot. And it's dangerous. You could wind up bumping the eight ball in the wrong spot, but you can use that eight ball to stop the cue ball, and you'll still have a good angle on that four in order to get to the five. So we're really struggling to get past these first three balls here. Um, but once we get on the four... Uh, we should be good to go. We're, we're clear for takeoff. Um, it's not exactly easy as that, but and you'll see what happens. So let's just roll it through here. All right, uh, that didn't work out too bad. We're fine. We have a shot on the floor. We can get on the five. But here comes a mistake that I'm just going to roll right through and then I'm going to stop it and we're going to replay that. I'm putting center ball on this shot. I'm thinking that the natural angle is going to bounce toward the left and come right up behind that five ball. I should have took a better, longer look at that shot. Here's what I thought the cue ball would do, because I, I put a natural stop shot on it, but I must have hit it just a hair too high, because the cue ball rolled through the four ball. I mean, it just kept going forward for longer than I thought it would. And um, instead of getting a natural angle off the four and off that rail to be perfect on the five, um, it just kept rolling through, It just and then it just died. So now we're stuck with a bad shot on the five ball, and uh, we're going to have to come with a shot to get back on this six ball. Uh, in, in my last video, I said that I spent most of my life as a shot maker because I was a terrible position player. And uh, here we are again. I mean, I can't believe I'm going back to my young days, but here I am. And, um, boy, it's, it's nerve-wracking, isn't it? 
you know, I'm too old for this, man. Life is supposed to be easy. I'm like, I'm like old. <laughs> I, it's, it's no big deal. I can come with it one more time. Um, this is not a, a popular shot here, and a lot of people won't shoot it because they're afraid of scratching in that right hand side pocket there. And I don't blame them for that, but you have to push through this five ball just like we pushed through accidentally on that four ball. You have to put top on this and top left. So you need a running English to spin the ball. Uh, clockwise to grab that right hand rail down there and spin it off that rail and then off the bottom rail and then off that left hand side rail here's what it looks like and uh here's what we're gonna do scooby now you could plan to shoot hard off this third rail and come back for a shot on the six in the side but if you go too long, you're going to be in trouble getting back on the 7. So I'm just shooting to go lightly into that third rail and bounce off to shoot the 6 down here in the corner. Um, this way, if I go too long, I'll still be okay on the 6. If I come up a little short, I'll still be okay on the 6. You don't want to eliminate your margin of error. Top left here, uh, that's important. You don't want that cue ball to die off the first and second row. So you need that running English to help you keep on moving around the table, just lag like that. Alright, we're back in line here. And it shouldn't be too hard. The balls are a little spread. It should be just fine. We should be out in here all day long. A little bounce off the rail. And now, what are we doing? I don't know why this issue keeps on coming up, but it does. Um, if you slam this ball, you're going to get on the line on the 8, but you're going to run too long up down the table and probably hit the 8, which is what we wind up doing. If you don't hit it hard enough, um, you're going to roll through the 7 ball and wind up on the corner of that pool table down here. And uh, that's going to be really, really an ugly shot on the eighth. So we want to get on the line on, on the eighth. But there's this comes down to speed of stroke. And for some reason, and you know, in the past few videos, I've lost control of my stroke. So anyway, you get my point. You want to kind of hit this kind of hard and bounce off the seven a little bit. Um, to come down to that top rail and bounce in line with the 8. This is tricky. I think you should practice this one. If you're going to practice a shot, practice this one because it comes up a lot. Uh, you could use, you know, a bunch of English and all that stuff. I'm using top, just straight top here. And I know to hit it hard, um, just don't slam it. The, last, the worst thing you want to do is hit this soft. It's just going to roll through the 7. Anyway, I keep repeating myself. I'm sorry about that. I know the first part of this video was long, but it, the whole thing is about solving problems. And a lot of problems come up in this rack. Um, not just solving them, but seeing them and, and, and avoiding them before they happen. Um, knowing what you have to contend with before you're down on the ball contending with it. Uh, that's the point. Anyhow, enough yakking, let's move along. <laughs> At some point, you just have to laugh, man. Just poke this in with a little bit of laugh. Just uh, force the cue ball over behind that nine ball, but you want to stay up high on it. And uh, take a deep breath and stroke through this. Keep your concentration. We were straight in on the nine almost, so... It wound up okay. That was a tough one, man. Uh, it was tough to produce. It was tough to shoot. But you know how that goes. Not every game is, you know, tic-tac-toe. Uh, pull, pull is like uh, business. All businessmen do all day long is they solve problems. They're very, very good. If they're a good businessmen, they're good at solving problems. That's what they do. And it's the same thing pool players do on the pool table. They solve problems all day, all night. Every time they're at the pool table. If you're good at solving problems, 
you're going to be a good pool player. You're, you're going to be a good businessman. Um, but but that's only if you work really hard on it too. You have to get the physical stuff down before you get the mental stuff down. So anyway, that's enough. Let's just loop it without without all this crap, and um, let's just enjoy it. Uh, like I said, there might be a delay uh, in a video or two, you know, in a couple of weeks, but I'll remind you that when we get to it. That was not the greatest break in the world, but it wasn't too bad either. Let's see what we can do with this. Let's run that again. Peace, guys.